so you all know me um, most of the guys i think uh, i'm working with the sdl or rws group for almost uh, more than 10 years yeah so i've been uh, interacting with a number of customers um, so i was part of the number of implementations uh, for the customers and also helped a lot of partners to build their teams and helping the partners also to success in their customers and also yeah our internal product teams i work with them so this is my topic uh, yeah so we we going to talk about it and just go through the what i would like to speak today um, so mainly like uh, what are the different publishing models we have it and what are the evaluation and uh, how how they been configured and what benefits you can get it from the using an semantic content model and also we will talk about that how you need to manage this um, and the content manager side if you are defining the content model for the semantic content models how you can manage them on the cm side you will learn it and also yeah how do you you can extend your uh, semantic content models um, just brief you about that how you can do that one and then later we go on to an, a small demo or i'll actually build a small website using an a uh, semantic content models quickly on to the publishing models so we seen the the number of uh, different publishing models and think those who are working with the tridian for quite some time i'm sure that you all experience these different uh, content models uh, the first one is uh, is called as an static publishing so where basically you create a component and template and uh, you render everything together uh, before you um, while you publishing it and all the predefined pre-rendered output will be stored in the broker database which is a dynamic experience delivery and which can be consumed by the web application using an cils as an html fragments so this is quite known for most of us like we done it this but definitely with the number of implementations and the later stage we saw that one the dxa dynamic publishing uh, where you can publish again with a component with a component template but this time you are not uh, rendering the your output uh, uh, you are not pre rendering your html output in the publishing while publishing you just publish them as an json r2 json format and those json will be stored in the the broker database and you will be using these broker data i mean these extensions either dx extension or the pci um, which is a public content api you can use to pull that content which is stored as a json output into your uh, public or in your website so on the on the website side yeah on the web application side you will be use a published content api like a graphic ql or any other technology to pull the content and that can be rendered on your website directly the new one introduced is um, the data publishing that's where uh, uh, it's a new concept so you don't need to uh, have it the, the first difference you might notice from these two models where you need to have a component template is a mandatory to publish either static publishing or use a dxa dynamic publishing but when you look at the, the new model you don't need to have an, a component template so you can directly create a component and publish it or page also you can create and publish it so when you publish it it will be stored as an json um, output into the broker database i think using an, a public content api uh, using an, a graphic ql or those uh, technology you can pull that content and use it your build your website using that so what are the benefits you can get of having this uh, new model where you don't have to have a, a component templates to be attached uh, it, it will just definitely improve your headless capabilities uh, to just have an a, how you can deliver it to the omni channel experience you can get it out also it will be reduce your cost to ownership uh, obviously that uh, you can uh, don't need to build any templates or any any designs on the on the content manager side because we had the mainly the complexity of the cms and allow the developer to consume the data as it is and so that you don't need to really uh, massage the, your content on the cms side of course because you don't need to uh, wait to have a content freeze to get this out so you can just create a component and publish and as, as soon as your web application is ready uh, to consume it so you can publish it so there we don't need to have an any more content phases for that so that will help you to take this into the market very quickly 
obviously so we don't uh, render any any templates uh, while you publishing it so it will improve your performance of your publisher and you can publish things much more faster so to build this one so what we required on the content manager side um, there's a new field property been introduced um, on the schema so while you defining your schema um, so there is a name, new property called publish this field when you publish an item that uses the schema so you can either choose that option or you can untick it not to publish it but yeah so if you want to def develop your website using this dynamic i mean semantic content model so you need to make sure that you have this checkbox is checked yep so each uh, schema field has this one um, and it will be you can also have another option that where you can actually make this as also searchable for the visitors so that means that basically it will be indexed uh, so you want to make the field indexable to make sure that you check the checkbox also uh, so by default uh, both properties uh, will be enabled um, so unless until you take them off or by default they will be enabled you can also set as in a general settings um, in the general settings option so if you want to set all the fields should be uh, enabled for the content um, publishable as well as um, searchable on your website so you can check them on the in the general properties itself while you're creating the schema so these uh, properties uh, will be available for the um, multiple schemas so when you're defining a component schema or metadata schema or multi schema uh, or region schema so these are the schemas you can have these properties set while you're defining the these fields yep so let's get on to the how you can create as in a semantic content models on the content delivery side or the dx side so so basically you can um, define your own um, semantic content model using an, a, a GraphQL uh, schema definition language. So by using this language, so you can define your own uh, schema, how, how it should look like. So for example, in this one, you see that we defined the uh, uh, custom defined one. So which is called the post and which has an, uh, different fields, ID, title and published at. So those things you can uh, define in your uh, GraphQL schema definition. Um, in the GraphQL, uh, you can also uh, query these content directly. So because this is an undefined uh, content types, so you can definitely query them directly on the using a uh, GraphQL queries in your query. So for example, like while I'm building in a blog, um, I'm trying to retrieve the details from the post, uh, so I can actually create a relation, and then we will be just providing it. Uh, post yeah they are exposed to be an, a, a native uh, content api so this will be uh, used with a native content api and so you can define the graphic redefine the sorry you can refine your graphic your api uh, to create your custom schema types so for example like you get your page uh, in this one like you within a page query so you're writing trying to retrieve the content and you you can also say that one undef untyped content model so you can get everything which is not typed and you define that and then once you define it you can actually get your content from the post uh, post model you created in the earlier or you can directly query from the post as well so you can use an query uh, to get the content from the post model so you can also retrieve it from the post model as well Yep, so you basically you need to uh, when you're creating the the graphical schemas so you need to make sure that they will be uh, searchable in the class path so that means that you might need to make or copy them into a, your content service where your content service is configured under the configured folder there is a schemas so that's where you need to place your um, graphical schema yeah so for example like this one like uh, you created an um, uh, post uh, type and then you want to define uh, then you can actually create this type and then you uh, extend with an with extension called graphql uh, ls and then you can uh, copy this into a uh, configs and schemas folder you can also use an add-on service uh, basically to create all your uh, graphical 
SQL schemas, um, and then you can deploy them as an add-on extension also. So you can consume them um, basically using any, any of the um, the JavaScript frameworks, for example, or any of the uh, op anywhere you want to consume it, you can consume it directly. Yeah, so we can actually, um, yeah, these all your custom content models also exposed through the uh, documentation, GraphQL uh, API documentation. So that is a very uh, useful. So you want to know that uh, what uh, what you can achieve with this. Uh, uh, you created, I mean, specific custom model. You created it. What can you achieve from that? So you can get that in the the documentation as well. Um, so I just want to. Um, build the website so this is a requirement given to me um so where is basically uh, i want to show the header and image on the my top and i would like to show the different articles uh, multiple articles on my web page and i asked to build this one in the react application for example and uh, and also i would like to have an, a detailed page so when i click on the one of the article article and uh, then I would like to show them in the uh, detail like this here. Yeah, so let's get on to the um, hands-on directly to see that how I can, how we can achieve this uh, design uh, using a uh, custom semantic model. So define the, if you want to make your uh, field available for the uh, content model. So what you need to define is that basically in the schema, so while you're creating a schema, you need to make sure that uh, the particular checkbox is checked. So just I've prepared the uh, one schema just to be uh, demonstrate this one called as a semantic schema or article. Um, so in the design tab, so every time when you define a field, so you can see that these are the fields. Now uh, publish this field to be enabled uh, when yeah, you can use these fields. So I defined these fields um, in the schema first, and I created uh, some components based on those uh, schemas, and also I created some images. So we're going to consume some images as well. So let me publish all of these. Um, sorry, uh, before publishing it. Uh, so this is on the CM side. So we configured this all of it. I also created an uh, my GraphQL schema and deployed as an add-on. So let me quickly show you the my GraphQL schema. So that's a CIS schema. So in this um, add-on, so I created an, a my GraphQL schema. So you can see it's called the sample GraphQL one. So that's where um, I defined my own uh, types, uh, my own uh, content types. So we created an a uh, multiple, uh, like for example, like a get full of full article. So for that, when I'm I'm going to use a full article uh, type. There. Yep. So in the full article, I would like to retrieve the title, short description, and content. So when as in a short article, I would like to retrieve only the title and short description and image. So this is my GraphQL schema. So with my own uh, type, my own. Uh, so we deployed this into the using an add-on. So now let me uh, go to the my components. Yeah, just let me show you quickly the component. Yeah, so it's a very um, simple component with an image attached to it. So let me publish all of them. So let me check that I'll get published now. Yep, so they're all published now. So I built in a small React application. So where we um, define the my content to be retrieved it. So, so I defined the article list first. So where we have an, a graphical query, uh, where we're trying to retrieve an, all the components based on the particular schema. So if I can, I can also run this query directly on, on the GraphQL interface. So 
So here I'm trying to retrieve all the components based on the schema called 394, which is my new schema. So you can see that uh, I retrieved an I'm just, let me check on my schema. So 394. Yeah, I need to define the component fields as well. Um, yeah, that's what I'm missing it here. Let me create my fragment as well, because I'm trying to use a fragment from the And you see that I retrieve all my components uh, based on the schema 394. So you can see that multiple data, uh, we retrieved it for the component. Uh, for the, based on the schema, so I published the three items so we can see all of them here. So I try to consume the same in my uh, React application. So that's how the, I retrieve it in the, my article list. And similarly uh, for the image also, uh, I will re retrieve them in the, my image um, in the image component. You know, for example, like article image, so you can see that one, I can run this query to retrieve the my image. Nope, what did I miss it? Yeah, so and let me use the one of the image ID, which uh, we published it. Um, I can get this from the my previous um, Query so we can run this one. And you see that uh, I have an image for the 395. So I can, the binary component. So you can see that I uh, retrieve the URL for that image. And uh, yeah, you also have any more information like uh, the variant, different variants if you want to retrieve it. But I'm going to use a URL in my example. But yeah, you can retrieve the multiple um, different information from the image. So that's how I try to remove the retrieve my image. Um, so I build in a small React application. So let me just to start that React application. So this is built with an um, GraphQL. Sorry, with the React application with Apollo based. So let me try to read this page. So you can see that my requirement was that I'm trying to have an image plus content here. And also you see that my different article being placed on here. So they will be directly retrieved from the um, these graphical queries. So we are using this graphical query to retrieve it. And by clicking on them, so you can actually retrieve and uh, you can go to the full article as well. Um, yeah, so if we need to create a one more, we can do that one. But, um, but due to the time con constraints, I would like to just to show you that. So this is how we can achieve the how you can retrieve the semantic, uh, your your own models, how you can define it, how you can retrieve the content in your React applications directly. Yep, so that's um, uh, mainly from the, um, my presentation. Um, I think I was only one going to take my questions. Just let me see the screen that if I have any questions to Take it from this. Um, I see the couple of questions. Uh, one of the question is um, asked is that, uh, is a data publishing model how to add the component to the page without a component template? Yes. So that is possible. 
Uh, so you can, um, in the 9.5 version onwards, you can do that one. So without any problem. Uh, the next question is that, is there any tool to help to write the query in a in the GraphQL? Um, with the 9.5, so we can, I mean, not 9.5, so we have an, a, a GraphQL is a tool already. So you can use that tool to uh, query your content. But if you're, yeah, th that will be the simplest tool. And there's a multiple tools available on to write your GraphQL queries as well. Um, I think let me get back to the my presentation again. Just I want to quickly show you the what we've done just to recap it, what we've done. So now you can uh, define your content structure. So that's what uh, we learned it, that how we can uh, create your website using your own structure. And you can publish them. And uh, yeah, so if you want to have your uh, content model uh, set up, your own content model to set up, so you can do that one, but that's optional. And you can also yeah develop your website by consuming this um, the GraphQL um, endpoint. So you can directly consume in your uh, React application or any of the JavaScript kind of applications. So you can consume the content directly.